I'm here to introduce Bujan Lewis. Bujan Lewis, a member of the Navajo Nation, is a poet, fiction, and nonfiction writer. His poems have been featured in the Kenyan Review, Platte Valley Review, and Hinchas de Poesia. His fiction has appeared in Alaskan Quarterly Review and Numero Sync. He received his MFA from ASU. Currently, he serves as the poetry and production editor at Red Inc., an international journal of indigenous literature, arts, and humanities. Bojan's nonfiction chapbook, Troubleshooting Silence in Arizona, was published through the Guillotine Writing Series in 2012. His debut poetry collection, Currents, was published by Bookmark Press this fall. These poems explore American identity through the power of fable, doubt, faith, and the environment. They offer a raw and authentic voice at a time in desperate need of voices so plaintive and kinetic. These poems are not just about the energy that makes up a current. These poems are also about how all currents must return to the earth that grounds them. In that way, Lewis's poetry feels like criticism of the institution in which we exist in a protest against the cruelties perpetuated to maintain them. As our own Dr. Cynthia Hoag says about currents, we are swept into a fierce and sublime poetry, part incantatory vision, part caustic critique of government cruelty and injustice towards indigenous people. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Bojan Lewis. Thanks for coming out. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. <laughs> and, and you all. <laughs> yeah, this shit just came out like two weeks ago. <laughs> It's weird, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. Uh, my dad's art's on the cover, the uh, publisher chose it, it wasn't like I forced it, they, they approached me. Um, he's always been an artist, my mom's always been sort of strong and, and terse, so. <laughs> they definitely informed my poetics. Uh, and this book is for them, of course, and um, my wife, Sarah Sams, also a poet. Uh, and also all the dogs I've ever, ever owned in my life or have led into my life. I like dogs a lot. Uh, a lot of this is based in my experience as an electrician. I worked as an electrician while I did my MFA in fiction. Um, I ended up writing a book of poems, of course. Uh, I still got that hangover from the MFA almost eight years later, right? Um, <laughs> so I'll just start with a poem. All right, this is called <coughs> Fire and Ashes. The red off the far ridge, an eating dragon slow coming down the valley. My mom's imagination over the phone, a quarter mile of cars ahead. No one has stopped on their way north or south to capture hot shots turning the beast to smolder. Somewhere out in the burn, under dusk, a rattler den unfurls fast as brush fire and clenches against the inferno draft that blocks entrance and escape. For an instant or minutes maybe, their unnatural warmth is a comfort beneath the ablaze final day. It's the shape I'm in. I don't tell her that I'll leave days from this moment, the high dry mountains we drive toward for the ashes of a different monster. Um, I'm from Arizona, I grew up in Arizona, so a lot of these are based, of course, here. Um, you know, I think as indigenous people, we have a real complicated relationship with this state and its uh, policies and politics, um, which comes through. Um, you can see it if you buy it. Um, <laughs> it's over there. Um, 
I recently met a poet at this conference I met, and she told me I had to be a better salesman for my work. Because <laughs> she was like, are you a poet? And I said, yeah. And my book you know, was sitting here on the coffee table. She's like, do you have a book? mm-hmm. <laughs> What's it called? Currents? And that, that one? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, man, <laughs> you got some stuff to learn. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I used to be an electrician. Um, I loved her sets. I loved Dante's Inferno. Uh, I've let, you know, I was a religious studies minor as an undergrad, so I love, you know, religions and mythologies and weird stories about gods and whatever, uh, deities. Um, so yeah, you know, when I would, would work as an electrician, I'd work for 14 hours a day, I'd, I'd get up at 3, go to work at 4, get off at 4, go to class at 6, get out at 9, try to be a student and go to bed, and those are my days, right? So I would try to write poems or stories in my head, and, and the basic circuit of a, a, or the basic electrical circuit is a hot, a ground, and a neutral. So I kept thinking in threes, and I could keep threes in my head throughout the day. Um, and actually, my short story collection is based in threes. Uh, that's a different. That's a different thing, though. Uh, so this is called Arc Flash, and Arc Flash is um, when something's ungrouted, and a hot conductor comes in contact with a metal object, and an explosion occurs. Um, I've almost blown off my fingers multiple times, and have destroyed many tools um, because of this thing. The stars went off and on, as if wired by the hell with it electricians, tired of lighting scrap-patched houses connected by threads of pre-dawn smoke to invisible weavings in the sky. Dim questions and silent answers. Cattle gaunt and wanting grazed between weeds across the valley, interrogated the dirt of wash and creek. How long since you've been clay after rain? Started awake at midnight, and under influence, I sought my car to kill the soft snores beside me. Hauled ass out of urban desert decay to sandstone cliffs five hours away where centuries of wind and more recent roadway gusts have made a half pipe of its base, though not enough to topple the edge of the mesa's level. Hours from Phoenix, oasis greedy and artificial, I needed crystal, my dad's home and ceremony, less familiar mountain tobacco. Not to guide my spirit used to mornings being lit, but to remind my tongue of blood, cold coffee made by other men's women who dispel me with smokes from cheap packs set within reach on their knees. Maybe they wish, aside from my soon departure, that I shared their danger. Bastards who make home confinement and needs hush. I left and arrived months before the rainy season, though cuts along the cliff face over crystal shimmered with mica, like stars burnt out, taking eons to reveal their absence in myth-heavy constellations. The sun risen isn't for me, cattle being herded, or darkness in the room I left to wake alone. Here, a few cars idle without drivers, warm up before the workday while smoke from houses vanishes and releases the night sky. <coughs> uh, so it, I, like I said at my talk yesterday with, with the students, um, this book took like nine, 10 years to write, another three to get published. Um, and I have one poem that survived my undergrad experience, and it, it made it in here. Um, the rest of them, I, I talk about burning my work. <laughs> I, I burned everything else. <laughs> so I'm like, that person was kind of a douchebag. Like, <laughs> except for this part. Uh, so this is called Red Dirt. I work to be more than roots, fed through days of heat and dust evaporating into a brittle husk, withdrawn and left as only remains. Whether stirred out by force or removed in mechanic iron swoops, 
I'm simple. Passed over and dumped onto a pile of old ground turned up, open to the air. Bound in earth pack, I release seeds, my blood to be windblown and spread. Straining from new foundation, I reach to hold all else, settled, empty of breath. Uh, I didn't plan this out at all. Um, I teach composition, so uh, my brain's usually thinking about the rhetorical situation. Um, <laughs> another three, right? <laughs> Here's another three. This is a, a triptych. It's called "If Nothing, the Land." Um, so I, I tried to write. I tried to write Octavian sonnets. Uh, in the voice of Sheriff Joe Pio, Steven Seagal, <laughs> and Jan Brewer, um, in, in, in that order. So the first one is the toughest sheriff in the world. There is no other bad than what I say is bad. It's tough living on this land. Miles of desert undeveloped, the interstates mostly unmanned or threads unspooled down broad hallways. Beyond their edge, the space is dead. A rogue trailer or redskin reservation, backward problems of methamphetamine and rape. Those doors have their own police, their own dumb justice. I concern my posse with invasion, paperless beaners, rust that rooms a polish. Inedible animals do no man any good until buried to cease the flies and stink. Um, the next one's called Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> if not thousands and millions of hours, I played bang bang, nab bad guy brownies and kung fu shoot 'em ups. Who's better fit to patrol kids in tiny pants than a convicted man? Limits like borders stretch thin and tear. If anyone can get a gun, then shouldn't everyone have one at the ready? Like in the glory days, a roundup of savages, spicks, and spooks out to devalue our kids, good at killing their own. I learned from watching birds nestled within cacti. Though there might be many, a single bird more makes another cavity, an eventual collapse. I'm so glad you have coffee. <laughs> um, the third part <coughs> is called Come Miera para el Desayuno, uh, which translates to Eat Shit for Breakfast. <coughs> Jan Brewer wrote a, I guess, an autobiography or something called I Eat Scorpions for Breakfast. So this is, this is for her. Uh, <coughs> Chickens dismantle like pit crews can a vehicle, scorpions quickly. Urged forward by pickers, the hens bob and amble over fallen oranges, bruised grapefruit, seek pincers, stingers, exoskeletons. Their work urgent and efficient. Back at the coop, stubborn roosters fight, bloody and unfeather each other until the losers peck frail chicks from the clutch strew limp bodies beneath the fluorescent light. The hens return, squawk, and circle the carcasses until the migrants transfer them in sacks meant for citrus to, on, to anonymous holes on the land. Uh, I'll, I'll read a couple more. If I can find where it's at. Um, oh, yeah. <coughs> it's right there. Um, this is called electricity. The morning roundups are current leaking to earth without interruption or fault. Above busted streetlights, the sun buzzes to a cuffed line of deportees, the sheriff's imbalanced authority. Any laborer gathered for a tear out agrees the pleasure of opening walls, 
is the view of what's no longer behind. The restrained motion of a body caught within a fence run between language is a union of shock and memory. All right. Um, and I'll end with this um, poem called Prayer. It's in, it's in four parts. Um, not good about praying or, or anything, so I thought I'd write it down. And there it is, right? <laughs> All right, prayer. My system is ruined by foreign pathogens blooming. I call it more or less blood created for me. Creator, should I call it you? I don't dream or rest. On this exhausted circuit, I'm in pursuit. Better to forget, keep trying. Do simply until done. There's no water here, but life is. Sun and moon thread this ground, the walk, the weaving. If I get another life, complaints will be missing. Fuse phases arcing, sudden and temporary. Sound bites for short films. Thanks.